Welcome back. Today in the hot seat, a brand new meter from Astro AI. Yes, the ever popular Astro AI has a new kit on the block. It's the all new DM130B. Let's take a look. Now, when I say new, I'm talking brand spanking new. This was just listed on Amazon perhaps two or three days ago. So, yeah, it is fresh off those presses. All new from Astro AI, it is an auto ranging meter with two times sampling rate and 4,000 count LCD display. Should be fun. Here's a quick peek from the Astro AI website. 1999 US dollars for this 4,000 count multimeter. Giving us the lowdown on what you can and cannot do. And one thing that was really amazing is, check it out at the bottom, warranty, 36 months, three years. Amazing for a cheapo. This brand new 4,000 count True RMS little Astro AI should be popular in the cheapo realm. What do you get in the box? Well, first of all, the box is your typical shipping box, nothing too unusual now we did get a little bit of damage on the side but hey none the worse for wear on the inside we got some super duper alligator clips here that always is a bonus when you're getting a new multimeter especially if you're new to the realm of cheapos or multimeters in general it's always nice to have a set of these crocodile clips on hand super super handy and finally we get our test leads these are uh, some generic looking leads and we'll take a look at those a little bit closer as well we get our instruction manual all in English quite verbose and what really surprised me is that this little meter has a according to the Astro website a three-year warranty what the heck is up with that a three-year warranty on a $20 meter insane Wow so those test leads I mean they're nothing overly special I'm gonna write home about them but you know what they're okay the test leads themselves, they're rated at CAT2 1000 volts, and they do have that uh, 10 amp rating on them as well. Um, as always, take that with a grain of salt in the cheapo realm. Um, probably wouldn't put these anywhere near high voltage. That being said, they are hard plastic. Um, they feel okay in the hand, and um, all in all, you know, for a cheap set of leads, probably a little bit better than your average set. At the end, they have a decent shroud on the tip, a good inch of shrouding at least. And uh, yeah, now it's PVC, it ain't silicone. No way, not at this price point. But uh, what can I say? Here's the crocodile clip as well. Simply goes inside the assembly, just like so. Ladies and gentlemen, Astro AI has left the building. Size-wise, well, you get the idea. It is definitely um, a little bit on the small side. It's not super, super tiny though. Um, much smaller than that Habitest, but overall, in terms of a uh, grab-and-go meter, ah, good size. To power up this puppy, you take three AAA batteries, that's right, three of them, and uh, you're good to go. Unfortunately, to take off that battery cover, you are going directly into plastic. Ah, oh, come on, Astro AI! Fit and finish, definitely, it's not bad. Um, it is a little bit on the light side, but not crazy light. You're not gonna be dragging around the test leads. Um, I'm not a big fan of the color coding for the inputs. I really wish they would stick with industry standards. Calm should be black and the positive should be red. That's it, that's all. Has a fairly decent boot on it. Um, it looks a little bit cheaper than it feels. It doesn't feel that bad. Not quite in the same league as, say, that WH-5000, um, but uh, pretty well the same idea. Flip stand comes out easy enough, no prodding around, and when it's on that stand, fairly, fairly well structured, so it's really not going to go anywhere. Um, yeah, looking good. Take a closer look at that selector switch, starting at the off position. Volts AC or DC, up to 600 volts. Diode resistance and continuity. Capacitance. Battery test, 1.5 volts. Battery test, 9 volts. Finally, 12 volt battery test. Microamps, AC, DC. Milliamps, AC, DC, up to 500 milliamps. High current, 
AC-DC up to 10 amps. Finally, NCV or non-contact voltage. At the top we have our hold slash backlight button. On the left we have our select switch. Finally at the bottom we have our jack inputs. On the left we have our 10 amp high current. In the middle we have our common and on the right our basic input or the resistance, voltage, continuity, and diode. Take note that milliamp is also shared with everything else. Let's turn this meter on for the first time. Bada boom, bada bing, bada bang. There we are. Defaults to DC mode, always nice. And we can see the enunciator is telling us we are in the millivolt range. Let's check out that backlight. Gotta hold down on that button and we have a little bit of bleeding on the right hand side as you can see let's just dim the lights a little bit here shall we so um not the crispest cleanest looking backlight uh, but hey you know what it's a backlight and it tends to stay on on average about 30 to 40 seconds so it doesn't shut off as soon as you touch it <gasps> thank you thank you very much so all in all, not a bad looking little cheapo. Hey, I always like that red. Something about it just makes you go vroom. But does it vroom on the bench? Well, let's find out. One thing I've noticed is that Avalon little crocodile clip really doesn't get a good grip. Um, just, yeah, falls off. What is that all about? Yeah. Starting with that voltage DC accuracy test. Here we are sitting at 2.502 volts. Hey, that is spot on. Take it up now to five volts and whoa, Mr. Accurate, excuse me. Perfect. Alrighty, let's just switch that over and should be looking at 7.5. Oh, we're in the 10 volt range, that's okay. 10 volts it is and hey, wow, man, oh man, this little guy is accurate. We're gonna step down one now. I missed the 7.5 and hey, spot on. Whoa, Astro AI. Woo, A plus for accuracy. You're the man. Pulled out that decade box. Let's take a quick look at resistance. This has a 40 mega ohm capacity. And you know what that should do for the average DIY at home. Um, let's take a quick gander. Sitting at one mega ohm and not too shabby. Let's bring it up to three mega ohm. Getting good. Six mega ohm. Yeah, let's try. 10 mega ohm. So nice and fast. It's not fluttering. It's settling on that range. Finally pulling out that metal clad resistor. 8.25 ohm. And it's pretty darn close. 8.4. So uh, hey, once again, fairly accurate little guy. 475k 1% resistor. Coming up just over the 500 range at 515. Diode time it is, starting off with a standard diode. And yeah, no worries there, there's that forward voltage drop. All right, let's get to the fun stuff. Let's get out those LEDs. Always good to see whether or not these guys can be lit. Here we go, starting off with the green LED. Oh, it is barely lit. Probably can't see that at home, but it is showing up. And we did have a forward voltage drop over to the yellow. Same thing, barely lit, but we do have that forward voltage drop over to the red. And that is also lit with the forward voltage drop, the blue. Oh no, the blue, no can do. And finally the white, no, same thing for the white. So three to five in terms of illumination and a forward voltage drop. In diode mode, the Astro AI DM130B is putting out a respectable 2.25 volts. Three would have been yeah, just even better. Really like that uh, selector switch. It moves with authority. Has a little bit of annoying beep, but hey, that's to be expected on most of the cheapos these days. That being said, it really clicks into place nicely. No worry about it getting lost in between ranges. Overall, it is a nice darn selector switch. Next up is capacitance. Now this is the downer. Yeah, look at that. 400 microfarad, what? Yeah, that's our range. So, uh, or max rather, so really nothing to get too excited about. Uh, the minimum it says is 40 nanofarad, but uh, uh, wow, in this day and age, really looking to see something a little bit better than 400 microfarad. Ah, anyway, long story short, let's take a quick look here. We've got a uh, 100 and a 400 and 
40 microfarad caps. Start off with the 100. There we are, 101.5, looking good. Here is the 440 microfarad electrolytic. And it was able to read that without any issues. So a little bit over uh, standard. I did try a, a one millifarad and unfortunately it was a no go. So in terms of capacitance, you are rather limited. The DM130B. Alrighty, here we go. Continuity time, stock leads. Three, two, one. And I'm not in continuity. <laughs> Gosh. Okay. Let's hit that select switch, shall we? And there we go. All right. I'm not even going to edit that one out because you know what? I'm doing it real today, folks. Here we go. Three, two, one. Very nice. Latched. Loud enough, fairly loud, and really no pressure required. And these are the default cheapo leads. So, wow, that was surprising. Good stuff. Pro Masters locked and loaded. Here we go. Very nice. Once again, latched, fast. Not really a big difference, surprisingly, from the Pro Masters to the standard stock test leads. Go figure. Ah, good stuff. Sixty-four point one decibels, the maximum output in continuity mode. Eh, could be louder, but you know what? I'll take it. Have it plugged into the default mains and hundred and twenty volts AC. Almost 119 showing up on the Astro AI. Now remember, this does have that uh, true RMS and AC mode. So very nice little feature to have on a cheapo. Now it also comes with your standard uh, battery checker. What it does basically, it puts a small load on those three different ranges. The one and a half volt gives you a 75 ohm load. Nine volt is a 430 ohm load. And finally the 12 volt is 680 ohm load. So basically that is going to put that battery to work and just show you how good or not so good it is. So we're starting off in volts DC. Let's just check the battery as per the norm. Whoops. Sorry about that. Coming up is 9.20 volts. Now we're going to take that and put it in our load tester and let's see what we get here. So definitely 8.4 volts. So it is, um, shy of that nine volt mark, but still it tells you that the battery still has life. Um, handy dandy little feature to have uh, can be really useful at times and uh, for one of these DIY type style meters always nice to have okay coming up milliamps and in the low volt range 100 millivolts right now showing is 117 take it up to 200 millivolts 217 on the Astro AI 300 millivolts and 318 on the Astro AI now we're in the milliamp mode and let's bring it up. Remember we have a 500 milliamp max, 400 milliamps and 500 showing up as an OL over limit. Okay, so let's just bring it down a little bit. 480 milliamps, still not liking it. 470, 460, 450. Oh, there we are. Okay, so it looks like the cutoff was around 400 milliamps. Yeah. So anything over 400 milliamps, despite what the meter says about that 500 milliamp rating, it just ain't true. And just to be clear, in the manual itself, they are telling you that it is a 400 milliamp uh, max load. So they're giving a little bit of threshold here with the 500 milliamp, but uh, yeah, 400 is where you top it out at. Finally, taking a last look at that NCV or non-contact voltage. Yeah. Fairly accurate, seems to uh, do the trick. No worries here. Run. Finally, I haven't done one of these in a while, but we're gonna try a high voltage test. All right, three, two, one. There we go, that's over 1,000 volts DC, and it is giving us a high voltage warning. Here we go, one last time. Yeah, we're getting an over limit. So it seems to handle that uh, spike without any issues. Looking good. 
Here we are, teardown time, and starting off with the reverse side, as always is the case, unfortunately, in the cheapo zone and in many other zones. Uh, no shielding. Ah, why, why, why aren't you people listening? Please, for the love of God, we just want a little bit of shielding. A little Faraday cage would really make our day. All right, so let's start off with those input jacks, and they are the basic split variety. Um, you know, nothing to write home about. They're okay. Soldering job doesn't look too shabby, um, but eh, you know. Now, unfortunately, there's a lot of solder and residue uh, flux, what have you, on the PCB itself. Uh, not the cleanest looking PCB, uh, that's for darn sure. So too bad that couldn't have been cleaned up just a little bit better. On the voltage side, we have one lonely PTC over here. Take a look at the fuses themselves. Over here on the left, we have our five by 20 millimeter, 600 volt, 500 milliamp fuse. On the right, we have our big brother, the 10 amp, 600 volt. Once again, another five by 20 ceramic. Here we have our small current shot and a tiny diode clamp as well as a few melts. Moving up the board, here is our speaker piezo. And of course the main IC in this case is cobbed. And we do like have a little bit of scratching going on here. I don't know what that's all about. Hmm, interesting. Rather than using a prong type method of connectivity for the batteries, we have our standard old fashioned wire assembly here that just connects from the battery terminals over directly to the multimeter PCB. Over here at the top, we have one of these program programmable headers that uh, does all the calibration via the factory. And in terms of NCV, look at that, nicely done, nicely done. We have one of those extruding protrusions a uh, nice metal filament that is embedded, not embedded rather, but soldered directly to the PCB, giving us a uh, pretty decent non-contact voltage detection. And you can tell it's a pretty long metal filament here. Another one big downer is the fact that you are gonna have to unscrew those four Phillips screws and look at once again directly into plastic. So if you need to change those fuses, over time, the wear and tear can definitely mess things up. I already could put everything back together and come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the Astro AI DM130B. Hey, you know what? It's not half bad. It's a cheapo under 30 bucks and it does have quite a decent set of ranges. Some of the cons are that low microfarad or capacitance range. Wow, you know, 400 microfarad just doesn't cut it. And you know, internal build quality definitely on the so-so side. Display was small, but you know, adequate, but still eh, it just seemed to be lacking something. Some of the good news though, is that it's highly accurate. And you know what, that Astro AI brand, they definitely stand by their name. Those leads too, for standard test leads, you know what, they weren't half bad. Great continuity, and the NCV was really good too. All in all, for a little true RMS meter, you know what, it's not a bad deal. The Astro AI DM130B gets a solid three out of five stars. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next one, keep on testing.